Η επίθεση στις 11 του Σεπτέμβρη παρουσιάστηκε ως κάτι το τελείως αναπάντεχο. Στην πραγματικότητα όμως, όταν ανέλαβε την εξουσία τον Ιανουάριο του 2001, ο Μπούς προειδοποιήθηκε ότι ο Μπιν Λάντεν θα χτυπήσει. Αυτό υποστηρίζει ο Σίδνεϊ Μπλουμεντελ, βασικό σύμβουλος του Προέδρου Κλίντον. Our national security advisor Sandy Berger told the incoming Bush administration officials this would be the biggest problem in foreign policy that they would face. There were three days of briefings of the Bush team. Την άνοιξη και το καλοκαίρι του 2001, έντεκα χώρες προειδοποίησαν την Αμερικανική κυβέρνηση ότι θα δεχθεί επίθεση. The Germans, the French, the Egyptians, the Moroccans, the Jordanians, the Israelis. Uh, and the Russians, especially the Russians. Putin appeared on American TV and said, I ordered George Bush warned in the strongest possible terms. General Donald Carrick, he was a three-star general. He wrote a memo that he gave to um, Condoleezza Rice, and the memo said, we will be struck again by Al-Qaeda. Ένα από τα βασικά επιχειρήματα της κυβέρνησης Bush είναι ότι οι πληροφορίες ήταν γενικές. Κανείς δεν θα μπορούσε να φανταστεί αεροπυρατείες και μάλιστα με αεροπλάνα πυράβλους. Όμως στη διάσκεψη των 8 πλουσιωτέρων κρατών που έγινε στη Γένοβα το καλοκαίρι του 2001 είχαν ληφθεί μέτρα εναντίον μιας τέτοια πιθανότητα. Αυτό υποστηρίζει ο δημοσιογράφος William Rivers Pitt. At the G8 Summit in July of 2001 out in Genoa they had missile batteries all around Christopher Columbus Airport because they were afraid of a plane coming in and attacking them. John Ashcroft was told not to fly on commercial airplanes. Το καλοκαίρι του 2001, σε ανύποπτο χρόνο, το γνωστό τηλεοπτικό κανάλι CBS μετέδωσε ότι για λόγους ασφαλείας ο Υπουργός Δικαιοσύνης John Ashcroft, που προείσταται του FBI, δεν πετούσε πια με εμπορικά αεροπλάνα για λόγους ασφαλείας. At that point, beginning in July of 2001, John Ashcroft stopped flying commercial and started flying charter jets. Well, if they're warning our attorney general not to fly, what possible excuse is there for not at least preparing NORAD, national air defenses, the, um, the airports, airport security, you know, the airlines to be on guard for a possible hijacking and attack? Ο Χέρς υποστηρίζει ότι η ανάλογη προειδοποίηση είχε δοθεί και στο δήμαρχο του Σαν Φραντζίσκο. One of the questions that we have put out there as an organization is the question of whether or not, um, you know, uh, Mayor Brown was in fact warned not to fly on September 11th. The story that I read, I believe it was in the San Francisco Chronicle, was that someone from his staff was contacted by a member of airport security on September 10th, the night before, and warned not to fly to New York the next day. Είχαν άραγε προειδοποιήσει τον Δήμαρχο του Σαν Φραντζίσκο να μην ταξιδεύει εκείνες τις ημέρες με αεροπλάνο. Είναι μια πολύ σημαντική πληροφορία και ταξιδέψαμε έως τον Σαν Φραντζίσκο για να το διασταυρώσουμε. Ο Δήμαρχος μας είπε ότι δεν μπορούσε να μας δει να μας δώσει συνέντευξη γιατί θα έλειπε από την πόλη αυτές τις ημέρες. Μας έστειλε όμως ένα κείμενο με το οποίο διαψεύδει την πληροφορία αυτή. Στο Σαν Φραντζίσκο, στο Πανεπιστήμιο του Μπέρκλη, ο συγγραφέας και καθηγητής Πίτερ Ντέιλ Σκοτ επιμένει ότι υπήρξαν προειδοποίησεις. There were a number of people who one way or another were told not to fly at that time. Uh, the uh, Salman Rushdie, the uh, Pakistani author, was told not to fly on a plane. Mayor Brown, although he's declined to corroborate it since, I believe, but at the time he had said that he was told not to fly on a plane that day. And I must say, all this talk that we never thought we'd have an attack like this, the Philippine intelligence in 1995, uh, they got the documents for what was called Operation Bojinka, which was a plan to hijack planes simultaneously And according to one version, we've never seen the actual documents, but according to press accounts of those documents, they would involve flying a plane into the CIA headquarters and another plane into the World Trade Center. So, and that's been around since 1995. Ένα από τα μεγάλα ερωτήματα αφορά τη συνάντηση της 6ης Αυγούστου του 2001 ανάμεσα στο διευθυντή της CIA, George Tenet, και τον George Bush. 
On August 6th, the president was in the midst of his vacation, he, his holiday. He went to Crawford, Texas, where he has his ranch. And uh, George Tenet was, uh, flew into town to give him uh, a daily, his presidential daily brief. So he was, he was giving him the brief, uh, which was titled, Bin Laden Determined to Strike the U.S. This was reported by Ray McGovern, a former CIA analyst who, who wrote for the Miami Miami.com, I believe, online. Ο Ρόι Μαγκόβερν ήταν υψηλό αξιωματούχο τη CIA. Ξέρει ότι ο Τένετ προειδοποίησε ανοιχτά τον Αμερικανό πρόεδρο για αεροπειρατείε. We know that the president was briefed on August the 6 2001. What's that? About five, five weeks before 9-11. We also know that there were very high level meetings before that of, of his chief advisors where uh, very stern warnings were issued about bin Laden attacking somewhere. We also know that there were all kinds of reports about bin Laden and uh, Al-Qaeda using uh, aircraft to smash into buildings and so forth. I don't think anybody could have predicted that these people would take an airplane and slam it into the World Trade Center, take another one and slam it into the Pentagon, uh, that they would try to use an airplane as a missile, a hijacked airplane as a missile. What we do know about the, this famous 6 August briefing, what the president knew? That's a very interesting question and one that I have to be very careful with because, as you know, the joint inquiry has not declassified that part of the report. That, remind, that, that still is classified. Uh, that remains a very highly sensitive uh, part of this. Ο Τιμ Ρέμερ ήταν μέλο τη κοινή επιτροπή Βουλή για Ρωσίε που εξέτασε πώ οι υπηρεσίε ασφαλεία συμπεριφέρθηκαν την 11η του Σεπτέμβρη. Το σημείο του πορίσματο τη επιτροπή για την περίφημη ενημέρωση του Προέδρου στι 6 Αυγούστου δεν δόθηκε στη δημοσιότητα μετά από επέμβαση του Λευκού Οίκου. Let me put the question in another way. I knew you'd try. <laughs> uh, Condoleezza Rice uh, said that uh, they will never expect it such a kind of attack using the airplanes as a, you know as a missiles we have public reports that are listed in the joint inquiry going back into the early 1900 early 1990s late 1980s talking internationally about the different instances of terrorists either planning to use planes as weapons, hijacking a plane and maybe crashing it somewhere. So how somebody uh, in Dr. Rice's position could say that uh, is highly questionable uh, to me. Σε δύο ακόμη περιπτώσει, ομοσπονδιακοί πράκτορε υποπτεύθηκαν ορισμένου από του αεροπειρατέ. Μάθαναν πιλότοι χωρί να νοιάζονται για τι προσγειώσει. Οι έρευνέ του μπλοκαρίστηκαν. Κένεθ Βίλιαμ σε Αριζόνα, σε Φίνιξ, και Κολίν Ράλι, η whistleblower of the year, η Time Magazine, both were basically stumbled onto and were investigating. Arabs that were in flight schools and they raised the concern that perhaps they were part of an operation or they were terrorists and, and they brought that to headquarters. There was, in each case, their initiative, their good investigative work was blocked by headquarters. Your show isn't long enough to explain the number of mistakes that the FBI has made. Uh, it is going down a list that seems endless at times. The director of the FBI in the Clinton period was, for the most part, not very cooperative with the war on terrorism that President Clinton fought. All the others sent in daily reports, but not the FBI. What about the CIA? There have been warnings from 10-11 countries? You're, you're referring to the CIA, aren't they culpable for mistakes here too? Absolutely. The CIA, uh, its list is probably uh, almost as long as the FBI is in many ways. We had the biggest thing for the CIA and the FBI. 